Welcome back to the channel, you kooks. Today, we're gonna to show you how to wire an inverter to a 12 volt lithium battery. Easy, straightforward job. We're also going to be reviewing the Ampeak power inverter, 3000 watts, and seeing if it gets the kook certification. So let's get after it. All right, kooks, so today we're gonna to wire an inverter to a lithium battery. So I have a 12 volt, 100 amp hour Uniwix battery, and I have a Ampeak 3000 watt pure sign inverter. So I've actually never really heard of the Ampeak brand. Um, they reached out, asked me to review. I don't get paid by any of these companies. I solely just get the products and then I give you my honest feedback. So we're just gonna crack right into it. So just busting it out of the box real quick. Right off the bat, I see some cables here. Nice thing is they have terminal ends already um, connected, crimped, and heat shrunk on. Only thing is fairly um, small wire, probably four gauge wire uh, for 3000 watts inverter, a four gauge wire, probably not the best idea. Maybe if you're just using it in short little spurts, but running this um, for a long time might not be the best idea. So. And peak providing the cables, maybe they need to step up the gauge one more. Um, it says here 200 Celsius rating, 25 millimeter cord. So yeah, that's the first thing I've just noticed out of the box. And another thing I see is no fuse provided. Um, it would be the safest route to run our inverter with a fuse probably around 250 amps for something of this size. So yeah, maybe stepping up the, the cord and stepping up the um, also adding the fuse. But like I said, I'm never gonna use 3000 watts in my van, so I'm already set up for it. I have a 200 amp fuse in place. So let's just break it out of the box real quick, check it out. Also, a wrench is provided. Here we have it, the AM Peak 3000 watt pure sign inverter. Um, already out of the box, looks just like an inverter. We have three outlets here. And then we have our um, USB ports. Also, we have a 12 volt socket. I probably won't ever use it, but nice to know that that's on there. A lot of times, it, you know, maybe you just get two outlets. So you also get the USB and it looks like that's about it. A nice little on off switch here as well. And also a little port for our remote. And I have a remote here and we'll test to see if that remote works. But before we get into it, let's just hook the inverter up to my Uniwix Defender 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. We have discounts for these as well in the description. Um, this thing's great. I've been using it to test a lot of products and it's been holding a charge. It's actually just been sitting in the shop for quite a bit now and it has held a charge. So about 13.3 volts, it's literally been sitting in the garage for about two months. So let's just crack into it. Let's just do a little installation, just kind of setting it up here off the Uniwix battery. Here we have the remote switch, um, kind of a, a fairly large switch, but here it is. Could probably maybe be half the size and I'm not really crazy about the design either, but um, provided with probably about 20 feet of cord, which is sometimes nice because sometimes you're wiring these inverters long lengths from where the batteries are to where the power needs to be. And that guy just plugs in right there. So the switch comes with about 20 feet of cord in case the van, you know, in case you have to run it long spans in your van or your RV or your off-grid home. So comes with 20 feet of cord. I only need about two, but it plugs in right here, down here on the little comms out put, plug it in, kind of an interesting. Yeah, so it doesn't exactly click in that well, huh? Hmm. Okay, there we go, it clicked into place there. Um, kind of interesting fit in there, but I got it in. And switch here, already went over it. It does, it is metal, so nice little metal switch plugging it in and I like to have this because I put my inverter under the couch and I don't want to go under the couch every time and flip on and off the switch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to wire this here to this Uniwix battery. Uh, um, obviously, and I, we don't really want a 100 amp battery to power a 300 watt inverter. So I'm just going to do a quick test. I'm going to see if we can actually get it up to the 3000 watts that it's rated for. And 
I'm gonna use the cords provided, um, obviously not recommended, jumping up a fuse, 250 amps, if you're probably running 3000 watts. So I'm just gonna hook it up with these cords. So let's just run this test. Also, um, I would recommend some safety glasses. You never know, especially here with this setup we got going. So let's just check this out. All right, so installing an inverter is fairly simple, straightforward task. We have positive, negative, and we have positive, negative here on the inverter. And I'm just gonna pop these little plastic pieces off. So it just looks like maybe they just slide. Oh, they just pop off to the side. So that's nice, just a little protection. So in case you're traveling around, things are jingling around, you don't want anything to kind of fall in and short on these cables here. So I'm just gonna take the bolts off. So here my wireless lav cut out. Sometimes this happens when I'm recording these videos, I go back and the audio just stopped working. My battery died on my mic. But essentially what I'm doing now is I'm gonna hook the inverter up to my Uniwix 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. Also noting this is for demonstration purposes only. A 100 amp hour battery isn't really realistic to power this 3000 watt inverter, but we're just gonna do a quick test. And also here noting that these four gauge cables that Ampeak sent out just don't seem to be the right proper gauge that we would want. We would want a much thicker cable here. So something, you know, two gauge, a nice thick welding cable even. But these are gonna work for what I'm using it for. I'm just gonna send the power through the unit for a short time. So we're just gonna go ahead and hook it all up. Um, also, they did provide a wrench with the unit just a uh, metric wrench of 14. And this is kind of nice because now I don't have to sort through my toolbox and find one. And sometimes you sort through looking for different sizes. So what I'm doing here is I'm just attaching the nut down really tight on the negative cable here. And then also attaching it to the battery. We always want to make sure all of our connections are tight, secure, so we have a nice positive connection. Next, I'm gonna hook up the positive cable. I will note here that ideally we would want an inline fuse, something around 250 amps. Um, I don't have any inline fuses sitting around in that range, so I'm just gonna kind of run it here. I'm gonna go for it and just hope it, it works out. I am gonna try to put 3000 watts through this unit. I wouldn't recommend using these cables for running 3000 watts. So just noting that you will want a thicker cable if you're actually gonna be pumping 3000 watts through this unit. I probably honestly never will have 3000 watts running through the unit. So just for the demonstration purposes only, I'm just gonna hook the red up to the battery terminal. Noticing when we attach it here, it is gonna spark. I know there's techniques to get the, the unit to not spark, but I don't really have any of those tools, so I just kind of put it on, it's gonna pop, and then you're gonna kind of connect it all into place. So here we have the setup, obviously not ideal. We would want the, we would want the inline fuse, and we also would want a thicker cable. But we're only gonna be running the power just for a couple moments. I'm not gonna sit here and run it for a long time. The cables would get hot and probably melt. So just being safe, knowing that if you're gonna use a lot more power, let's use thicker cables. So we'll start first with my handy dandy Warrior Harbor Freight heat gun. Let's plug this bad boy in, see how much we get. Showing I have full battery, I also like that. So it kind of gives you a state of charge on your battery. So let's just turn it on. You can already see, we're knocking down some power. 1400 watts. The inverter is running smooth, no problems. So that's good to know. Uh, it can handle double this. So I don't, I'm gonna try to figure out what else I have and we're gonna try to put this to the 3000 watt limit. Alrighty, so I got everything hooked up. I have the heat gun, I have an air compressor and I have a shot vac. I'm hoping this will get to the 3000 watts um, that is needed. So let's just start with the heat gun. We got, now we're gonna turn on the Shot vac and the air compressor, it's gonna get very loud here. All right, 
So that was about as close as I think I can get with just three units. You saw it jumped up for a minute to 3000 watts. So we got, we got what it was rated for. Um, obviously it's gonna kill this battery super fast. If I was running all this, it'd probably last for like 15 minutes. But as you can see, we did get up to the 3000 watts. So it, it is working as advertised. That is always nice to know. Sometimes you put these units to the test and they don't really cut it. So why don't we just unplug everything now and install it into the van? All right, so here is my old unit. This is an Ames Power 2000 watt, 4000 watt surge. Uh, this isn't a pure sign inverter. So it's a little bit old, but it has lasted many, many years. And I'll find somewhere else, something else to do with it. Maybe it'll go to a Burning Man project, but for now, let's just store it away. And now we're gonna install the Ampeak to my system. So I'm getting it in. One thing I will note, um, has this tiny little ground connector here, kind of a pain in the butt. I liked it so much better on my Ames inverter. I'll show you the clip here. It was just a nice little twist knob. So now I got this in. Also, it has these little plastic guys here, kind of nice protecting just the cables, once we get everything in, you know, we're bumping around on the road. You never know if uh, something falls back and short something. So I do like the plastic cover. And then we just have a washer and a locking nut on there. Or sorry, yeah, wa a washer, a locking washer and a nut. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do before I get it installed, is I'm gonna set up my um, remote plug the remote in as well as plugging in my surge protector. I just like to use this. So I plug that in, I run it through over here. Pretty basic, easy setup. Like I said, 3000 watts, a bit over cure, kill, but I am getting the pure sine wave, which is a lot better than what I used to have and a much quieter inverter. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in. All right, so I got it all hooked up. Um, I actually got my Starlink running here and my um, computers hooked up, plugged in, so I wanted to get the fan running. The fan's actually quite loud, but it seems a little more quiet than my old one. I'll just bend down a little closer here. And I'm just running about 160 watts with my computer plus the Starlink. But I do shut the, the couch here. It makes it a little bit more quiet. But yeah, it's quite loud, but most of the inverters are. I haven't come across a very not loud one. So, but yeah, it's all installed. I put the switch on. I just kind of plugged it into my old spot. I'll definitely fix this setup later, but it's installed. Then you heard the fan just kicks off. So it kind of just turns on and off when needed. But yeah, it's all installed. And let's just wrap this video up. Alrighty, Kook, so we got the inverter installed. It works, we tested it, it did the 3000 watts. So working as advertised and the remote, we also plugged that in, checked and made sure it worked as well. So I got it set up in the van. I know I'm gonna like this inverter a lot more, a little bit more quiet and also just, I get that pure sine wave. So a little more efficient as well. So that's gonna wrap it up. Before we wrap it up, I do wanna let you know, um, Ampeak actually has great customer service. So the first um, inverter I got, this is it. It had kind of a loose shaky screw in it. I contacted them and they sent me a new one and this one I'm going to send back to them. So quick response time, I actually got it back so quick. Um, I wasn't even ready to take the old one out. So quick response time with Ampeak. So the customer service element is there, which actually makes this even more kook certified it's a decent inverter for the price right somewhere around 350 bucks if you're looking for 3000 watts only thing i would know is maybe sizing up the cables and adding in a amp on the cable but that's it kooks thanks for watching also checking out the van kooks van conversion Masterclass. if you are working on your van conversion and you need a little help I highly recommend it. You can check it out in the descri description below and we will see you kooks in the next video.